G'day all, welcome to my second tutorial on the IEEE 754 floating point standard. Uh, today we're going to look at converting decimal numbers to their 32-bit uh, bit patterns in IEEE. Okay, so just a brief rundown on the general format for 32-bit floats again. Uh, we've got sort of three different parts, the sign, the exponent and the mantissa. Uh, the mantissa can be thought of as being either 24 bits, uh, if you include this implied bit just here, the 1 or the 0, uh, but usually you sort of say that it's 23 bits wide, the mantissa. Um, yeah, the 1 or 0 is implied by the exponent. We'll have a look at that in a second. Okay, the sign bit is 0 for positive numbers or 1 for negative numbers, and the exponent is, is a, a, a biased exponent. And the value that's written in here, the unsigned 8-bit integer that's written in there, to get the actual power of our exponent, uh, we've got to subtract 127 from it. Or, as we'll see, to figure out what the um, actual bit pattern is, when we get our power, we've actually got to add 127 to it. Yeah, 127 is the bias. A couple of little examples here, but we'll see how this all works later. Um, there are some special values for the exponent, and... They're basically, if the exponent is all zeros or all ones, then the bit pattern is actually representing a special number in IEEE. So if the whole number is all zeros, it means positive zero. If it's nothing but, you know, the sign bit set and the rest is all zeros, then it means negative zero, weirdly enough. Uh, if the exponent is all zeros, but there's something other than zero in the mantissa, then it means positive or minus uh, the normal or subnormal. Uh, if the exponent is all 1s and the mantissa is all zeros, that means positive infinity uh, or negative infinity, depending on the sign. And we've also got nan, or not a number, which is uh, all 1s in the exponent and something other than 1 in the mantissa, or sorry, something other than 0 in the mantissa. Um, if you set a single bit in the mantissa for your nan, um, the rest of the bits are up to you to define some error code. Yeah, it's up to the programmer. Okay, so the mantissa for 32-bit floats is sort of 23 bits long, but there's also this implied bit, like we just saw, which is implied by the exponent. That's either 1 or 0. Uh, if it's 1, then our number is in normalized form, and the CPU is going to deal with that really quickly. It's going to do um, arithmetic really fast. Uh, if it's 0, then the number is tiny. It's very, very small. Um, that comes about if your exponent is all zeros, and you've got something other than 0 in your mantissa. And that's actually a denormal or subnormal number, and the CPU is going to deal with that much, much slower. So try to avoid those if you can, if you're doing, you know, high performance code. Uh, but the other thing is that you can actually set, uh, MXCSR, you can set the CPU up to just pretend that all of these denormal numbers are actually zero. And that'll speed up your code a lot as well. If you've got a lot of these subnormal, uh, numbers in your application, which is unlikely anyway. Um, okay, so the the mantissa is is really just um, the digits kind of right of the radix point, and in binary they mean almost exactly the same thing as they mean in base ten. So something like zero point one one in binary still means uh, the fraction one one over one zero zero. The thing is that. 1-1 one, one in binary means 3, and 1-0-0 zero, zero means 4, so, you know, it doesn't mean 11 over 100, like it would in base 10, it actually means 3 quarters, or 0 0.75. Uh, there's a really easy way to get the uh, mantissa bits one after another as well, which we'll have a look at in just a second. Uh, the the normal mantissa works in almost exactly the same way, only there's a 0 implied at the start by the exponent, yeah, instead of being a 1. We said that before. Alrighty, so this is the crux of the tutorial. It's a, a conversion step by step. This is just the method I use. Um, here's our bit pattern. Uh, 32 bits, and we've got no idea what any of them are. Uh, this one just here, there's actually 33 bits drawn out here. This one just here, the uh, dark orange one, is the implied mantissa bit, and that's not actually uh, in the final numbers bit pattern. Yeah, it's implied by the exponent. Alrighty, so we're going to convert one 
173.7 to uh, its 32-bit floating point bit pattern. And the first thing to do is the sign, and that's really easy. So the most significant bit is the sign bit. That's uh, bit number 31. And that's going to be 0 for positive numbers, like we've got here, or 1 for negative numbers. And if your number is negative, so if we had negative 173.7, uh, all you'd do is set the sign bit to 1, and then for the remainder of the algorithm, uh, you could just pretend that it was positive. Okay, so the next thing that we've got to do is figure out the exponent. And we want this in normalized form. Like, this is not a denormal number, so we want it in the form 1 point something something something. And to do that, we can repeatedly divide by 2 and keep track of how many times we divide. Uh, and the number of times that we divide is the power that we're going to want to represent with our exponent. So the first thing we do is, um, you know, check if it is in normalized form already, and it's definitely not. 173 is much larger than 1. And for normalized form, we need a 1 there, just left of the radix. So we divide by 2, and we get 86.85. Uh, that's not normalized form either. So we divide by 2, we get 43.425. It's definitely not normalized, so we divide by 2. Still not normalized, we divide by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Uh, we get something like 2.7140625 by the time we've divided by um, 2 to the power of 6. Uh, but the next division uh, gives us 1.35703125. So 173.7 divided by 2 to the power of 7 gives us normalized form. 1.357 blah 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 blah. So the power that we're looking to represent with our exponent is 7. Yeah. Um, yeah, if you're really sneaky, you just get the log in base 2 of 173.7. Get the integer part to that. That's going to give you a 7 as well, uh, you know, with a single operation with your uh, desktop calculator. Uh, but do be careful because the log to the base 2 trick won't work for numbers less than 1.0. Yeah, you can still use log if you want. Uh, I, I would. You know, I'm not going to divide all these times. That's boring. But, um, you, yeah, be careful. Um, alrighty, so what we just said was, uh, instead of writing 1 point, no, 173.7, we're actually going to encode this as positive 1 point that, 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 multiplied by 2 to the power of 7. This is scientific notation in, um, normalized form. So the exponent that we're trying to represent is 7. And the bias for the exponent is 127 in, uh, 32 bit IEEE. 754. So what we've got to do is uh, basically just add our 7 to 127 and figure out the 8-bit bit pattern. So 127 plus 7 gives us 134, and 134 as a unsigned 8-bit uh, integer is that bit pattern. 1, 4 zeros, 1, 1, 0. So that is our exponent field right there. Yeah. Uh, the next bit's really easy. Our number's not denormal. Uh, there's something in the exponent field. You know, we've got a bunch of ones. So the implied bit in the mantissa is going to be a one. So the number that we've written is something like this so far. We've got positive one point and then something, something, something multiplied by two to the power of seven. That should say seven just there. And so far with these uh, first three little parts, We've explained uh, all of the bits that I've colored yellow, and that one's kind of orange looking for some reason. <laughs> uh, but it's the mantis's job to explain the rest. So these 23 bits right here are going to explain the rest, this portion here in white. Let's have a look at how we do that. Um, okay, so to convert any digits right of the radix to some other base, you've just got to continuously multiply the value by the new base. Uh, everything left of the radix is a new digit, and you subtract that prior to continuing the multiplications, placing the digits in the mantissa as you go. Okay, so that reads like a dog's breakfast, but as we'll see, it's actually a really simple algorithm. Uh, a few rules here for when you when you sort of stop, or when you're done. Uh, if you get 0, 0.0 from subtracting a digit, then you're done. The rest of the mantissa is zeros. And if you reach the same state twice, uh, the same digits right of the radix, then your sequence is going to recur forever. Yeah, so you can just grab the recurring sequence and, you know, repeat it over and over again until your mantis is full. 
Uh, if you run out of digits and we've got 23 here, you're done as well. Uh, in IEEE 754, you've actually got to consider the next three bits and round your final bit accordingly. Yeah, but in uh, x86 CPUs, uh, they've actually got the rounding rules specified by the MXCSR register, bits 13 and 14. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Let's just move on, shall we? Okay, so here's how you actually uh, translate that fractional bit in our uh, scientific notation uh, normalized form number into the mantissa bits. What you do is you write that fractional bit in this column. Well, this is just what I do. I write it in the uh, number column and we multiply it by 2, which gives us uh, 0 0.710625. And the whole part, the part that we get as the whole bit, which is either going to be a 1 or 0, is our digit. So the whole part to that multiplication was a 0. And then we write that fractional answer in our number column, and we repeat. So this time, uh, 0 0.714 blah 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 multiplied by 2 gives us 1.428125. Uh, the whole part to that number is a 1, which becomes our next digit in the mantissa. And we repeat with the fractional part of that. So you keep removing this 1, this whole part. Uh, we get 0 0.428125 multiplied by 2 gives us that. And the whole part to that number is a 0 once again. So that's our next digit. And we repeat again. We end up with a 1 as the next digit. We repeat again, we end up with a 1 as the next digit. So you just keep multiplying by 2 and taking the fractional part as the um, you know next number that you're going to multiply by 2 and putting the whole numbers in your mantissa digits. Um, yeah, so we keep going for a long time actually. 0 0.8 multiplied by 2 gives you 1.6, gives us a 1 digit. Uh, 0 0.6 multiplied by 2 gives us 1.2, gives us another one digit. Ah, now this is where something interesting happens. After a little while, um, quite a long while actually, we end up with uh, 0 0.4 as our number. And we've actually already had that. We've had the number 0 0.4 back here. So at this point, um, we've actually found a recurring bit sequence. Uh, instead of figuring out you know, what the digits are again from 0 0.4, we can actually just take the first occurrence of the 0 0.4 and copy those bits over and over again. So that bit pattern was 0, 1, 1, 0. And uh, we know that our number is actually going to repeat forever. 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. It's never going to stop. Um, yeah, so we can actually write out the rest of the mantissa really quickly. And it looks something like that. So I've just put in yeah, the occurrences that would actually fit, which is um, two and a bit, the red one, the uh, pink one, and the blue one just here. And that, my friends, is our bit pattern right there. Uh, 173.7 in uh, IEEE 32-bit float is going to look exactly like that. Okay, just another quick example, in case that one didn't make sense. Uh, a negative number, and something less than uh, one. Um, so the negative 0 0.75, the, the first uh, bit is very, very easy. Uh, this is obviously a negative number. And you can tell from that little <laughs> negative sign just there. Uh, but basically that's going to translate to the uh, sign bit being 1. And thenceforth, from then on, uh, we can pretend that negative 0 0.75 is actually 0 0.75 for the remainder of the algorithm. Um, alrighty, so we've got 0 0.75 and we want it to look like 1 point something 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 to be in normalized form. Uh, this time, instead of dividing by 2, uh, we've actually got to multiply by 2 and our exponent is negative. Yeah, if you, if you use the previous examples, uh, steps and you try and divide 0 0.75 by 2 to figure out what your exponent's gonna be, you know, you could divide that by 2 till the cows come home, but they're never coming home. And uh, you'll never get 1 point something 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 by dividing 0 0.75 by a power of 2. So you've got to multiply. Uh, anyway, it happens pretty quick. 
0 0.75 multiplied by 2, which is, um, you know, checking the first power of 2, actually gives us normalized form, 1.5. Uh, so, the number in normalized form is going to actually look like 1.5 multiplied by 2 to the power of negative 1. Um, our exponent has to represent negative 1, and once again we've got to remember the 127 uh, bias. So, 127 minus 1, or, you know, 127 plus negative 1, uh, if you like, gives us uh, 126. So the bit pattern we've got to represent with our exponent is 126. And that's it right there. 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. Okay, good. Uh, once again, the implicit mantissa bit is 1. Since this number is nowhere near to normal, it's really, really large compared to the normal numbers. Uh, and, you know, our exponent has something other than 0, so it's definitely not a normal number. The implied mantissa bit is a 1. And so far we've explained negative 1 and the multiplied by 2 to the power of negative 1. And with the remaining 23-bit mantissa, we've got to explain 0 0.5. Uh, that happens to be extremely easy since um, if we follow the algorithm from the previous example and we multiply by 2, uh, we actually get 0 0.5 multiplied by 2 gives you 1.0. So once again, we subtract that first digit, which is uh, the whole part, that's the 1, and that becomes the first digit of our mantissa. But in so doing, uh, we end up with 0, 0.0 for the um, fractional part, so nothing. And uh, that means that the rest of the mantissa is all zeros. Good stuff, so negative 0 0.75 in 32-bit uh, IEEE 754 is going to look exactly like that. Alrighty, so some common values here if you want to have a look. Yeah, I just picked out some values and thought I'd put them up. But that's about it for the toot. But what I do want to mention is uh, just a shameless plug on my website. There's um, a, a section on Windows apps, and one of them is Xiaomi, this arbitrary precision calculator that I've written. And this thing actually specializes in base conversions. So if you want to know some uh, bit pattern, say we want to know the bit pattern for... 0.95 uh, you can actually do something like that 2 alpha base 0 0.95 as the first parameter and 2 as the second parameter and if we hit equals we'll get something that looks looks like this so this is an arbitrary precision calculator and it it works with uh, recurring digits, so there's no loss of precision. And uh, this this actually means um, 0 0.11, and then this 4-bit sequence is recurring because of the R just here. So 0 0.95 in decimal equals exactly 0 0.11 uh, with a recurring 1100, 1100, 1100 in uh, base 2. Yeah, so this calculator might help you um, figure out the bit pattern to your mantissa if you want to check it and uh, yeah you can do all sorts of crazy bases if you want uh, yeah give it a download and try it out it is in beta so be careful it's not perfect but um, yeah give it a shot anyway that's converting to 32 bit uh, IEEE 754 floating point standard and thank you for listening see ya